Oh. Okay. We kind of go get cookies. I guess that's, that's out of the question now. <laughs> Got some order here. If we're ready, uh, this is the March 17, 2014 <coughs> meeting of the Lake Forest Committee of the Hall. I like to ask that roll be called. Chairman Novit. Here. Mayor Schoenheider. Here. Alderman Waldeck. Alderman Moore. Here. Alderman Pandeliana is absent. Alderman Tech. Here. Alderman Reisenberg. Here. Alderman Palmer is absent. Alderman Edelman. Here. Six present. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, first item on the agenda, or next item on the agenda, would be a, the approval of the minutes of the March 3rd, 2014 Committee of the Hall meeting. Uh, do we have any revisions, changes, or comments about the minute, minutes? <coughs> there being none, do we have a motion for approval of the minutes? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We're going too fast. Uh, third item on the agenda would be community development update. And Kathy? Thank you, Chairman Novit, Novit Mayor Schoenheider, members of the committee. Um, I am here tonight to really provide you with an overview of development activity. It is spring. There's a lot of things happening. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit, a little bit about a whole lot of things. Um, there are a, a couple things that we'll talk about that are currently in the public hearing process. So we're not here tonight for, for debate or discussion. Um, certainly questions are welcome. Um, and you can feel free to stop me anywhere along the way. And I'll, I'll stop you about 7.25. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'll talk. Big <laughs> I'm much better if I'm on point. This isn't my forte. Um, tonight's overview, we're going to talk about developments in progress and some <clears throat> upgrades to existing developments uh, in progress, some that are in the public hearing process, <clears throat> and some that are uh, pending. They're on the horizon. Um, I want to talk a little bit about overall activity levels. I know monthly you get the report, but just wanted to show you some graphic images to um, give you a better idea of the trends. Um, talk about some initiatives. Uh, some of those have, have come from the council and other groups. And then I want to close by just making a few comments about service in general. So projects in progress. Um, I know you are all familiar with the Northwestern Lake Forest Hospital Plan. The City Council, a few months ago now, approved the overall site plan, approved the architectural design of the hospital, uh, the exterior lighting plan, uh, some work has gone forward on the campus. The new direct road connection between the campus and Route 41 is completed and is open. Um, I think I mentioned that we did some traffic counts while that was under construction along Westmoreland, uh, along Deer Path and some of the other roads um, on the ramp from 41. And as the weather gets better, we'll be following, uh, going back and doing some further counts to see if, in fact, uh, to date, this has made a difference in traffic volumes on Deer Path. The, the initial perception is that it has reduced traffic somewhat. Um, the, uh, the major uh, driver in the timing for the, the site getting under construction is really approval from the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, there are wetlands. Uh, located in the footprint of the building. Those will be mitigated off-site, but in the city, in uh, the Lake Forest watershed. Um, and that, the hospital hopes that the Army Corps permit will be received by the end of summer, early February. Or, I'm sorry, the end of summer, early fall. Um, that was probably a slip there. Um, and assuming that that happens, site work will be expected to get underway on the main part of the campus in the fall. Uh, with ideally, in the, in, the, if, in the most optimistic of, under, of situation, um, of conditions, the footings for the hospital building itself could be underway at the end of 2014 calendar year. Um, we've been working 
even though the approval process for the hospital is complete, we've been working closely with hospital staff, uh, not just community development staff, police and fire have been involved in meetings, engineering staff, uh, our sewer and water staff from Public Works. Uh, we do have a regular monthly meeting, so we at least meet once a, once a month with them. We actually meet on site um, in their trailers, which are to the west of the 900 building. Um, and each month we have specific topics and appropriate staff attend. Uh, in fact, we have a meeting this Thursday and the topics will be um, finalizing the exact configuration of the roads, looking at some of the internal intersections, um, looking carefully at this connection to uh, Westmoreland. You heard from uh, Lake Forest Place residents and uh, some revised drawings really make this the dominant connection so that it will be a, a much simpler right-hand turn for those folks coming out of Lake Forest Place. And ideally, uh, Westmoreland Road from here to the connection here will see greatly reduced traffic. We're also working closely with the hospital team as they develop the plans. Um, and because I, had, I knew I had a lot of time, I actually brought show and tell. Um, they have given us the first uh, advanced set of schematic design drawings for the hospital. And as I was uh, lugging it to my car, I thought it was a bad idea to bring your show and tell, but um, so this is the, I won't pass it around, but this is just one phase of the plans for the hospital. The benefits of getting an advanced set is that our staff can begin to look at this, become familiar, ask um, appropriate questions as we have our monthly meetings so that when the plans actually come in for review, nothing's gonna be a surprise. We'll know the areas where we're gonna look, need to look outside for expertise that we don't have in house. We'll know the areas that we'll be able to move through quickly. <clears throat> um, the rendering of the hospital, again, I know you've all seen this. Uh, this is looking from the southeast uh, toward the hospital across the pond. Uh, so this area here is where the pedestrian corridor will be. Uh, the first floor will be connected all the way through. You have the five pavilions. Medical office pavilion will be two floors. The cancer pavilion, uh, the two hospital wings, and then the women's center. Uh, the emergency room is also located at this end. Um, our fire department staff have had the unique opportunity to actually be in the room as the hospital bays, as the ambulance bays are being designed. Um, they've actually um, worked to set up cones and um, drive through the area using the dimensions that are proposed. So it really is, a, I think, a unique way to design a hospital. Woodlands Academy, also something that I know you're familiar with. Uh, it's been a couple years now since the council approved the consolidation of the former Woodlands campus and what um, was the old main campus. This property, you may recall, was initially one, uh, a single property when Woodlands first moved here in 1904. Uh, today, old main is coming down. Uh, this is the eastern end of the building. Uh, we just received our, our weekly detail of the work and if the weather holds, uh, they should be uh, just about in the middle of Old Main by the end of March. The initial completion date was the end of March. There were, were several days during the winter due to winds, due to extreme cold, when they couldn't be up on the roof uh, working. So that did delay work. The estimated completion date of the demolition is now the end of May. Um, one thing that is really taking a lot of time, it would be easier to come in here and just knock the building down, um, but over 90% of the materials of the building are being reused. So although the, the exterior bricks, the face bricks, they're brittle and they're breaking as they're coming down, those are not able to be reused. But I don't know if you can see with the sun, but all of these Chicago common bricks, um, people are lining up for those. So the, the materials are being sorted, all the wood timbers, there's virtually no steel in this building as, as I think you heard uh, during the earlier discussions, but those 100 year old timbers, uh, people are clamoring for them. So everything on site is being sorted and bundled and then reused. So I, I think that's um, a good legacy for Old Main. 
you've seen the Woodlands Academy Master Plan before. Just as a reminder, um, this is the location of Old Main today. Uh, right here is a proposed location of a memorial to Old Main, and that is directly below where the cupola used to sit. The cupola right now is on the front lawn. Um, but the proposal is, since the cupola came off in one piece, that it will be located there uh, directly below where it stood for 100 years and be a memorial. Um, a key part of this plan is relocating the entrance, pulling it away from the ravine. So the Woodlands entrance and the former Barra entrance would be eliminated and there will be a new entrance that will have much better sight lines. Um, that was a key issue for uh, the police department as we looked at this site. Uh, athletic fields are proposed, uh, some reconfiguration of the interior roadways, some parking will be added, uh, the Cooney Library remains, and the hope is that these fields uh, will be ready for play in, in spring of 2015. Also in, in the works, uh, work on Market Square, you heard from Michael Schreiber of L3 Capital uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, city staff from fire and community development uh, have been on site. They've walked through all parts of the building. Uh, L3's team, project team, put together their responses and their uh, suggested plans for addressing the life safety issues. There was a meeting of, of their team and staff uh, a week, week and a half ago, and the report I received is that uh, staff was very excited. Uh, this wasn't a discussion about um, pushing people to do more. It, it was clear that the people on this team know what's needed to protect this structure for another 100 years, and there's um, no reluctance to make sure that all the life safety upgrades are, are underway. Um, the next step uh, with that project <coughs> underway, uh, is that um, they will come forward to the Historic Preservation Commission and present their plans for uh, tuck pointing, repair of some woodwork, um, some various exterior upgrades. They're still in the repair um, life safety mode. From there, they'll move forward to discuss some new lighting, awning, and signage concepts. And then beyond that, uh, they actually have some really interesting ideas to maybe enhance some of the alleyways behind the buildings. Um, you already have on the south side some of those alleys that serve as storefront corridors, so there's some thought that there might be some greater opportunity to take advantage of some of those spaces. <clears throat> Similar to Market Square, Deer Path Inn has new owners. Uh, they're a little bit uh, behind where Market Square is. Market Square. Uh, the buyers um, had quite a long due diligence period. The Deer, Deer Path Inn sale happened more quickly, so the Deer Path Inn owners are still <clears throat> in their due diligence mode, <clears throat> but will be coming back uh, before, uh, back to city staff with some ideas for upgrading. Uh, and the focus will be the same. Uh, they're really interested in upgrading the kitchen. Thank you. <laughs> not used to talking this long. <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> when we talked internally um, about what was the number one issue for staff, staff said the kitchen, and coincidentally, but very appropriately, when we talked to the new owners and asked them to identify their priority, it was the kitchen as well. Um, there have been some issues in the kitchen. Um, so to focus on the kitchen, to focus on the elevators, uh, and then they will be looking forward to actually doing some upgrades in the guest rooms as well. <coughs> Market House Patio. Uh, so looking through Market Square hmm. at Market House, uh, the patio uh, upgrade came before the Historic Preservation Commission over the last couple months. Uh, you may or may not notice there is a large oak tree that is missing here. I'm sorry, a large elm tree that is missing. There are two large elm trees on the patio, and both their arborist and our certified arborist came to the sad conclusion that the easternmost elm tree, um, no one felt comfortable saying it should stay because it really is a potential hazard at this point. It is cabled. Now's actually a good time to go over there and look up at it. Um, 
it looks okay when the leaves are on there. If you look at, up at it today, you'll see that it's been topped dramatically, that, that it's cabled, uh, that it's been treated over the years. So working together, we determined that, that, that it really was the best time to allow the removal of that tree uh, since they were doing some upgrades on the patio. Uh, the patio, if you've been there, you may recall that it's not level which is a hazard, a safety hazard. So the patio will be leveled, which doesn't take a, a whole lot of adjustment, but it will be brought up to a single grade. Uh, the replacement inches for the tree that will be removed in part will be uh, planted near Talbots on the east side of Bank Lane. An existing ash tree there will be removed and the city arborist will direct the species of tree with the idea that the right tree in that location, a tree that, that can survive in a tight location, um, will eventually provide a higher canopy returning to that area. Uh, this corner will be reconfigured slightly. This tree uh, is a new ornamental tree that will be planted and the idea is to bring the, uh, the green up to the sidewalk. Um, you can't see it because of, uh, because of the sunlight, but the fence, the existing fence will, will remain, but there will be some pre-planted ivy panels that will be um, affixed to the fence. And the ivy will not only grow up, but will also grow down over the, uh, the wood timbers. Uh, the patio will be, once it's reconfigured, will accommodate a few more, more diners, which is something that the owners wanted to achieve. This is a a very popular area during those few times of the year when it's actually appropriate to sit outside and eat. <clears throat> uh, developments that are currently in the public hearing process. Dunkin' Donuts. Um, I think you all know that Dunkin' Donuts is proposed at the north end of the depot building located on the east side of the railroad tracks. It's the space that formerly was occupied by Northern Trust Bank. I believe it's about 1,200 square feet, which includes some, some of the outside area that they will be using as well. This is a view from the southeast uh, that looks toward the, the depot. This is the existing door. This is the existing window, which would become a pickup window. Um, years ago, Northern Trust actually had broken through the brick wall to the north of that window and put in a, uh, a new pick up window or you picked up money but yeah it was the same thing it was a pick up money <laughs> pick up window um when we talked to Dunkin Donuts we really discouraged them from doing that given all the work that had just been put in on the train station so they will be uh actually working within the existing window opening removing just the lower panel of one of the windows and putting in a sliding window um one of the challenges is that in order to be able to reach your food from your car, because that window is high, uh, there needs to be a grade change that would, will start just about here. Um, and at the highest point, I believe it's about 18 inches. Um, so to accommodate that grade change, there will be a median that will divide the drive-through lane from a pass-through lane. The plan commission did see this at their last meeting, uh, their meeting in February. Um, their primary concerns were, uh, they directed us to look at ways to um, maximize the safety of this pedestrian crossing. Now that we have the buses unloading in this area along McKinley, um, if you sit there at, at 4, 435, you see a number of people, a, a long line of people walking through here. And it's probably not those times when you have a bunch of people walking through, but when you have one or two people. Um, and, and maybe it's even uh, more important to make sure people who are coming out of the depot are noticed. Um, so we talked about wanting to make sure that this is wide, wide enough, uh, probably a minimum of eight feet. We talked about different treatments uh, that could be put in place the plan commission asked us to look at um, something like a rumble strip or something uh, like a speed bump. In talking with the police chief, we learned that, at, that people actually speed up to get over speed bumps, so that probably is not a, a good location for a speed bump. But 
perhaps some pavement texture, a combination of signage, and maximizing the width of that pedestrian crossing, together those uh, could increase the safety of, of this crossing. <clears throat> the other area that the Plan Commission fo focused on was the area just south of the drive-through queuing. The menu board is proposed just south of the main entrance door. This is actually the menu board. So it's right here. <clears throat> and the queuing is counted from the menu board. We looked at average queue numbers uh, from various Dunkin' Donuts. And certainly there's peak times and there's non-peak times. But there seems to be an average number of, of six, four to six whether this business would be um, one of the higher volume businesses or one of the lower volume businesses, we don't know that. But it, to be safe, the Plan Commission really wanted to be sh sure that this queue could accommodate more than four vehicles. Because if you get one more than that, you block this lane. Um, and if someone's late for a train, you do have people coming around here. This is a frequent drop off space. You have taxis in this area. You have people parking. So we're looking at some options for this area, whether it's uh, shortening, pulling back this median, or whether it's making a break in the median, which is something uh, city engineering staff suggested, to allow essentially an escape <coughs> route in the event that this does back up. So those are two issues that we're working with. Uh, we're working with the developer in preparation for a plan commission continued review of this. This item was also considered by the Historic Preservation Commission, and the commission raised serious concerns about the, the character, um, particularly as it had to do with the signage, um, the, the change, the visual change to the east side of the uh, train station building, uh, raised some concerns about the location of the trash enclosure. Some of those things we're working through and considering the options, and I expect this to be back before the Plan Commission in April and likely before the Historic Preservation Commission then as well. Uh, the other topic that you've heard a lot about is the proposed retail development in Amberley Woods. Uh, Whole Foods is a proposed tenant. This is located on the southeast corner of Route 60 and Saunders Road. Uh, the overall site <coughs> plan that was presented to the Plan Commission also in February <coughs> proposes um, a, a large Anchor tenant here, about 45,000 square feet building. This is where Whole Foods is proposed. And four outlots. Uh, this outlot would have a drive-through in this area. Um, and these outlots could have a single tenant or could have multiple tenants. A bank is proposed as the fourth lot outlot in this location. Um, a new right-in, right-out onto 60 is proposed, uh, as well as uh, two connections to Saunders Road. Uh, the main issues. This, this is a view from the northwest, um, looking from maybe one of the higher floors of one of the Conway Park office buildings. So this is looking toward the building that would be Whole Foods. Uh, the issues that the Plan Commission focused on, traffic drainage, uh, some kind of a termination for Amberley Court, which is the road directly to the south. That is a private road, and that is a residential neighborhood and uh, residents were concerned about cut through traffic in that area. Uh, the plan commission talked about setbacks, both in terms of buffers from the existing residential uses to the east and to the south, and in terms of the streetscape. Uh, the approved plans as they stand today for office development have a 150 foot setback from Route 60 and 50 foot setbacks from the east, west, and south sides of the property. Uh, there was discussion about the overall intensity of development on the site. Uh, this would uh, require clearing the property of trees and replanting other types of landscaping. Uh, the Plan Commission did talk about finding a way to uh, support this development, but talked about wanting to make sure it was a, of an appropriate quality. The Building Review Board had the same discussion, focused on uh, the design, architectural design and materials of the building and the landscaping. Uh, so we are doing work on um, the issues raised by both the Building Review Board and the Plan Commission. At the Plan Commission level, there was also um, some talk or some question about whether this development would be predominantly retail uses 
or whether there would be other types of service business. Um, and that's something that would be addressed in the amendment to the special use permit. The overall Amberley Woods development was approved by, through a special use permit. Um, so that would need to be amended. This property is also still within the term of the annexation agreement. So it's likely that that agreement may need to be amended as well. This matter is scheduled to be on the plan commission agenda on April 9th. We actually have a, um, a pretty in-depth meeting scheduled for uh, tomorrow morning from 11 to 1 with the developers. So hopefully we'll see some, um, some ideas and some responses to the issues that have been raised so far. After it goes to the plan commission, there was a question earlier this evening. Um, after it goes to the plan commission, it will come before the city council. Uh, since the plan commission and building review board will likely consider this in April and May, um, this may get to the city council in May or it may be June. Uh, going, moving to residential development, um, the Mendino development, it is a duplex development proposed for the east side of McKinley Road, uh, just north of the high school. This is a property that already has uh, one duplex building on it, two units. Uh, so this development adds two more buildings. This development originally came with a fourth building in this location. There were drainage issues. There were various other issues. The developer responded by um, removing one of the units. And as a result, this works uh, much better. The plan commission uh, unanimously recommended approval. They are working through their final uh, development of their plans uh, and then this will come to you for both tentative and final approval. These are rental units. Um, this is a the plan commission found that this was a good location for these types of units and really met a need. Uh, this is within walking distance to the central business district certainly to the high school. <clears throat> Just other developments that are out there in the Sedler Square area, Waukegan and, and Everett. Um, in the former Northern Trust Bank building, the building now occupied by Lake Forest Bank and Trust, a medical office building is taking a large amount of square footage on the second floor of that building. Uh, Sunset has been talking about upgrades and possibly some expansion. Um, in the Central Business District, uh, we're seeing uh, quite a few interior upgrades, alterations. In fact, next week during spring break, you will see scaffolding, uh, scaffolding on uh, the corner of Deer Path and Western uh, in that space above Walgreens they are going to do some major renovation and they've waited until spring break to um, block the sidewalk essentially but it's a good time for them to do that. Uh, Westwood Square restaurants uh, the, they have their permits they are working um, it is a slow process I've heard different things from the owner uh, they are paying rent uh, I heard that the bistro, which is um, proposed in the Burger King space, would be open in May. I wouldn't make your reservations yet, but they are working and their permits are not expired, so they're moving forward. Um, we've had contacts from a couple of private clubs in the community that want to do upgrades, enhancements, expand their parking, expand their paddle courts. Uh, depending on the magnitude of those projects, uh, they may be able to just move right into the permit process. If they're significant, they may need amendments to their special use permit. Uh, developments on the horizon, uh, you're all aware of the Laurel Avenue site, the former municipal services building. The Property and Public Lands Committee has selected three development firms. They are on a short list. I've had an opportunity along with our consultant Lee to meet with all three of those groups over the last two and a half weeks. Very interesting discussions, very interesting. They're all taking different approaches. Their proposals are due uh, about the third week in March and the Property and Public Lands Committee will be interviewing those groups on April 16th. And I believe that group expects to have a recommendation to the City Council on a developer by the end of April. Uh, just to refresh your memory, this is the site, uh, Western Avenue Laurel. Um, all of the developers we've, we've talked to really continue to see this as a residential site. There was, uh, they were challenged early on to, to think broadly, but all three of them have come back. Uh, so it's likely we'll see a plan that, that is fairly similar to uh, 
the plan that was actually accepted by the city council, the, the bubble plan, the conceptual plan, with lower density to the west, moving toward higher density with a mix of products, um, townhouses, condominiums, apartments, perhaps some attached and detached single family homes. Uh, this is a new subdivision that we've received a submittal on. It has not yet been scheduled for plan commission. Uh, this is Route 60. This is the Conway Farms Golf Course. This is Town Line Park. This is a 30-acre parcel located at the end of Oak Knoll Drive. Conway Road is uh, just to the south here off the map, and this is Waukegan Road. Um, so this property will come before the Plan Commission. It is currently zoned R5. I expect that the request before the Plan Commission will be for rezoning from R5 to R4 uh, to allow greater density, uh, similar to the surrounding properties. Um, and then approval for a plan preservation subdivision, which would allow lots to be clustered toward the west end of the property. Uh, there are some uh, wetland and floodplain issues at the east end of the property. Uh, the Middle Fork Bicycle Bridge uh, is a project that uh, former Mayor Mike Rommel is, is very energized about. Uh, this would reconstruct the bridge that's located to the north of Route 60 off of Academy Drive. And there's a star right there, but right below the star, actually you can see the old abutments. This bridge used to uh, bring the armors from the corner of Deer Path and Waukegan um, across this land and then back to Reed Hall, which was the house. So it was a very long driveway, a very elegant bridge. Uh, we can't, the bridge cannot be reconstructed in its historic form because of requirements from Metra. Um, the city is participating in, in discussions and design um, conversations about then how does the bridge get connected down to Route 60, and then over the long term really looking at a connection not only to the city's town line park, but also to the west across the tollway bridge, and then to connect with bike paths in Matawa and along the Des Plaines River. And then a couple things even looking beyond the city limits that, that will affect the city in, in one way or another. To the south of us in Bannockburn, you probably heard that Heinen's announced that they will be going into Bannockburn Green, taking the space uh, that Dominic's for, formerly occupied. The city will be involved in that because we do do plan review and inspections for Bannockburn, and there will be um, a pretty significant uh, rebuilding of the interior of that space. Um, also in the same area, Mariano's is looking at the at a, the northern portion of the Beeson property, which is located on the south, on the northeast corner of Highway 22 and Waukegan. Um, the city has a boundary agreement with Bannockburn, so if those discussions move forward, we will likely come to the council and talk with you about possibly amending that agreement to um, respond to this proposed development. And then looking to the north, uh, Heinen's is also proposed to locate in the Dominic space uh, in Lake Bluff, just south of 176. And then looking further, the county has not yet received the official application, but has been in discussions for quite some time with the developer about uh, the hilltop development, uh, which will be a mixed use development, including residential, commercial, and some assisted living units. And then to talk to you about day-to-day -day activities, uh, just to give you a visual image of where we are with building permits. Um, the low was in fiscal year of 2010, looking at a high as we move to fiscal year 2012. Uh, this year included projects, the, the new dormitory, the new residence hall at Lake Forest College, the new residence hall at Lake Forest Academy, uh, the new science center at Lake Forest Academy, and the Chicago Bears work. So that accounted for that spike. Each of those projects come with a number of, of permits. Um, this is where we are today, um, and we do expect the ne next couple months to be quite busy. I um, wanted to give you a visual image of new residences. Since January 2012, we have issued permits for 22 new residences, which is really significant. Even if you look back to the 2004, 2005 years, um, we, we weren't at that number unless we were building out a Middle Fork farm. Um, 
I can send you a copy of this separately. It's hard to distinguish the red from green, but the new homes are both on vacant lots, many of them in established neighborhoods, such as the, the neighborhood by South Park, the Washington Road neighborhood, um, some lots that have just been out there and vacant for a long time. Uh, others have been uh, the result of demolitions. You'll see the demolition activity really follows this corridor. So it's neighborhoods near the high school in the Washington Road South Park area. And then we're starting to see a few in uh, uh, along Green Bay Road in the Whispering Oaks neighborhood. So that's <coughs> traditionally the corridor of demolitions. Um, and many of those homes have just simply outlived their useful life. Uh, some of those smaller homes were never built for um, life beyond 100 years. Board and Commission activity. This is usually a very good predictor of what's going to happen in, in the coming year, the coming two years. Uh, fiscal year to date, we are um, we have seen a significant increase since fiscal year 2010. Um, so as we look at that, that tells us the next year is likely to be uh, increasingly busy. Uh, home inspections, these are related to home sales. I know every month <coughs> on your flash report you see home sales. Not every home inspection results in, in the closing. Sometimes we're, we're a jump ahead and the closings don't happen. But again, we see that number picking up. Um, we don't deal with the, the sale price, we just deal with whether or not there's a cross connection on the property. Um, distressed properties, uh, since 2009, uh, the city has formally noticed just over 40 properties as distressed properties. Uh, we've made good progress, particularly in the last 12 months, in addressing over half of those. Um, we still have some, uh, this area in here, it's about six that, that we really haven't gotten the responses that we need. We haven't been able to find the right connection. Sometimes when those properties are in foreclosure, everyone's in the state of saying, not my responsibility. Uh, but we do have a number of those properties that are in the process of being Im improved right now. So that's a, a much better position than, than we were in two years ago. Um, just some initiatives, and uh, these initiatives have come from the council. They've come from community engagement meetings, they've come from boards and commissions. Um, uh, some of them involve code amendments, others are more practical, and this is one that's more practical. We, late in calendar year 2013, we were able to implement our iPad pilot project. Three of our inspectors are now, are now equipped with iPads. Uh, we worked closely with the IT department and developed a protocol, uh, which was painful to develop, but we developed a protocol that's going to make it easier for us to bring additional iPads online. What these iPads do is really enable our inspectors in the field to result inspections, to respond to questions by having the, the code at their fingertips, by having plans, rather than having rolls of plans in their car, be able to pull up uh, digital plans. Um, to be able to take photographs, send them to someone back at the office and resolve issues in real time rather than coming back and saying, I saw this and it looked like that. Um, so the three inspectors who have the iPod, iPads, um, I would say one was very excited, one was accepting and, and one perhaps um, was dragging his feet a little. I think all of them are, are excited and pleased with the progress they've made so far. Um, still have... Um, we're not using them fully yet, so we still have a ways to go. Uh, a couple code amendments. Uh, medical marijuana is an initiative that came down from the state. Uh, we can't prohibit the location of either dispensaries or cultivation <coughs> centers in the community. However, in reality, when you look at the limitations already put in place by the state and any additional limitations that we might put in place through our process, uh, location in Lake Forest is is limited, uh, but this will go, come before the plan commission in the next 30 to 60 days. <clears throat> Secondary living units, uh, Alderman Moore, a year ago, uh, held a, the first community engagement to discuss granny flats. The plan commission has had one follow-up public meeting and one follow-up public workshop on this. Uh, they have uh, given us clear direction on the code language that they'd like to see moving forward, so they will likely hold a public hearing on this within 
the next 30 to 60 days as well. Uh, the purpose on pursuing this was to provide more housing options, to really meet both housing needs and preservation interests, and to make some of the large estate properties more economically feasible to purchase. Um, it could be coach houses, garage apartments, uh, pool houses, other structures that already exist. You will likely see the recommendation from the plan commission that uh, we open the door uh, slowly on this or open the door just a little bit and first deal with permitting these uses in existing structures. It would essentially allow a second rental living unit on property zoned for single family use. A uh, key issue is neighborhood compatibility and preservation of property values. Uh, adoption of building code updates. This is particularly timely now that the inspectors are equipped with iPads, uh, but we are working with the Construction Codes Commission to bring forward a recommendation to the council to move us to the 2012 International Codes um, related life safety codes as well. And the key issues will be for the Construction Codes Commission and for the City Council to um, decide whether or not you want to go with the recommendation in those international codes for sprinklers in all residential, all single family residential structures. Um, the City of Lake Forest has, has moved slowly in that direction. The Amberley Woods development, the Willow Lake development, the Thorndale subdivision, those were all approved specifically with requirements for sprinklers, uh, either give either due to the narrow lots or the limited access. Um, the Construction Codes Commission will see videos from the fire department uh, that really demonstrate that some of the newer building materials, although they're cheaper and they allow homes to be built faster in the event of a fire, uh, they can be devastating. Uh, when glue lamb beam, beams come apart and you have a, a full collapse of the roof rather than the older construction that would allow an attic fire to burn up rather than to collapse the structure. So it'll be an, an interesting discussion. Um, Construction Codes Commission will also review the current requirement for cast iron piping um, and may choose to move uh, the full way or, or may choose to take some interim steps that, that move a, a bit to a more relaxed code requirement. And I think the end goal of the Construction Codes Commission is to have fewer local amendments. The international codes are, are widely used. They've been widely researched and studied. They're updated from time to time. and uh, there probably is less and less need for the City of Lake Forest to differ from those. It also provides us with the opportunity to align with other communities, which is particularly important because we do provide services for Lake Bluff and for Bannockburn. Uh, wireless code provision updates. Um, Alderman Moore chaired a task force uh, that looked at uh, changes to our wireless ordinance. The driving force for this was to uh, determine how we would replace the antennas that are on Old Main. That issue was addressed, and so frankly, this project kind of got put on the back burner, but we are ready to uh, move that forward to the Plan Commission for consideration um, to really provide encouragement to the wireless companies to consider co-location first and to really avoid the, the construction of additional towers. Um, and then a, a final initiative is really sharing resources and knowledge. Uh, city staff has participated with, the, with Lake County, has hosted meetings with other mu municipalities monthly to talk about how we can all work together and, and build on each other's knowledge and take advantage of each other's resources, particularly important because everyone has smaller staff. Um, and I think we've had some really good successes. Uh, a subcommittee of this group studied the medical marijuana issue and developed a model ordinance that at least provides a framework for all communities. Every community is different, but we were able to collectively share the task of doing the research and, and thinking this through. Uh, this group also uh, released a joint request for proposal for elevator inspection services, and the council will be seeing the results of that probably in the coming months. Um, bring you some options for that. We've talked about what has been fondly referred to now as the bullpen concept, um, where we perhaps can back each other up. If, if someone has a plumbing inspector who's going on vacation for two weeks and they only need three inspections done, is there a way, way we can share services? Um, we did a very mini uh, pilot on this uh, when Highland Park called us a number of months ago and worked with the city manager and the manager of Highland Park, and we were able to offer some services 
um, fully covered our costs, but we were able to help them out for two days. So I think that's a, a concept that um, everyone's getting more comfortable with, and it seems to make a lot of sense. Um, there's also the opportunity to look at assistance for special projects. And when I earlier showed you the hospital plans, this is an area where I think there's a real opportunity for us to look to the county. The county has already been involved in a couple hospitals out in western suburbs, so they have some expertise in uh, portions of the hospital that we don't have the expertise in. And rather than send our staff to training to review plans for the only hospital we're going to have in Lake Forest, it may make sense to share some services. Uh, there also may be the opportunity to work with Lake County. They're very spread out. There may be some areas where they have one or two inspections a month that they may be able to use our help. Uh, so we're currently working with the city attorney to develop an intergovernmental agreement for the council's consideration in the coming months. And then finally, um, I just want to talk broadly about service. Um, I think all of us, and you hear from every department, uh, as public sector employees, that's kind of the heart of um, why we're here. And uh, I think for community development, it's it's really important to people in the department to provide that service. A couple things that we're doing along with other communities, we are um, in communication with the city of Washington, Illinois. They're working on uh, tornado recovery efforts this spring. They're, they're really starting to ramp up. I've been in conversation with, with their director of development fairly frequently just to talk through issues and, and talk about how we do things. Um, we, we have agreed to... Uh, accept electronic plans for new houses for one month in May. So they will actually send us digital plans. We'll do reviews. Uh, we have a group of staff that will be coming in on a Saturday morning to offer that time. Um, they thought they had inspections covered. They may need some inspection backup. That may be something that we may talk about. But to, to really look at the magnitude of the building that they're going to be doing over the spring, um, is pretty amazing. The, the structures they're building are very simple, very straightforward, so I think we'll be able to um, offer our one-week time and plan reviews and help them out a lot. And there are various communities throughout the area that are doing the same thing. And then finally, the uh, Community Development Department as a group, uh, one day a year, does get together and spend a Saturday morning volunteering at a food bank. And I, I think, again, that's a way to give back, but it also helps us to get out of the office and really build our working relationships in a different way than we do when we're under the pressure of um, staffing the counter and answering phone calls and um, getting emails from aldermen. So I just wanted to share that with you that those are things that we do as a department as part of who we are. And I almost did take the hour, so. <laughs> Any questions? Excuse me. Okay. Uh, we're almost built out. Do, do you have a count of vacant lots existing in Lake Forest, the number of vacant lots that are buildable, residential? It depends on how remaining properties are or are not subdivided. But generally that number, if, if we look at um, existing zoning and kind of uh, project forward, the additional lots we could get are, are probably in the range of about 150 of new additional lots. We do have a number of existing vacant lots in the community, probably another 60. Um, but I think what we are seeing is different types of development and, and redevelopment activity. So a, a little over a couple hundred between the existing and the 2B subdivided. And that could change if there was some decision by the council to significantly increase density in certain areas. And then, so in the Whole Foods site, that's the one non-residential site of significance that I'm familiar with. Or do we have many others like that? I want to clarify one thing I just said. Yeah. The number I gave you doesn't include the um, multifamily units that would be at the old MS, MS site. Um, that would oh. likely be in the range of 120 to 150. Okay. But, but those are not single-family lots. Um, other res residential sites, the 30-acre the Patterson site was, was a big one. Um, the Riley property, mm -hmm. uh, you will shortly see a, a sign, I believe, going up on Route 60, a, a marketing sign. Um, and then the, the majority of land is in the northwest quadrant of the city, north of Middle Fork Farm, south of Knollwood, and west of Waukegan Road. Most of that area is zoned for R5, 
which is a minimum three acre lot size. There are some challenges to developing that area. Uh, some, some of those uh, properties have had conservation easements placed on those. Uh, that is adjacent to the forest preserve. Um, but there are some large lots back there. So it's, it's hard to predict exactly how that area will develop. And, and then non-residential parcels besides the Whole Foods site, are, th are there pads in the office park across north of Route 60 that could be developed into more office space? There are four pads in Conway Office Park, mm -hmm. one on either side of the Abbott Building um, at the north end of the park, east side. Uh, there's one parcel that could be developed that's under the berm, and then there's one parcel that's just north of the Conway 1 and 2 building. So those could, I, I can't tell you the square footage, but it's, it's sizable. So Lake Forest is about 90 to 95 percent built out. Is that a good approximation? I think that's fair to say, and I will say that um, I think we've been using that number for the last 10, 15 years, and things keep changing. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's, it's fair to say that. Okay. Thank you. Great report. Thanks. I had a question because only because you went to Bannockburn and up to up into Lake Bluff, is the is the Target store still happening? Are you familiar with that or? I believe it is moving forward, um, and I think there is an additional outlot or two. Okay. But I I don't know the exact <clears throat> timing, but last I heard that is moving forward. And then kind of a clarification. I don't want to comment on the uh, uh, the potential. What are we calling the Whole Foods site generically? Um, it is called the Conway Neighborhood Market. The Conway Neighborhood Market site. Uh, personally, I'd like to wait till boards and commissions do their work before I make a comment or anything, but there's a, uh, uh, because of the annex, would you explain, from my understanding, we have extraordinary uh, um, rights as far as determining as, as a city, because of the annexation ruling, don't we have some expanded purview over that, or is that inappropriate to talk about today? I'm going to defer I, just to an explanation of it, not sure. not what we were going to do with it. But I think the city attorney's better to respond to that. Sure, thank you, Mr. Uh, or Alderman Moore and, and Kathy. I, I think that while we are ordinarily operating just under our regulatory schemes when we deal with land use issues, with an annexation agreement, we have some other terms. When that property came into the city, uh, I want to say maybe about eight years ago, nine years ago, we had identified a series of considerations as to what it could do as well as what it could not do. And for a change of that, it, re it would require an amendment to the annexation agreement. And like any other agreement, that's more a matter of negotiation. We have authority in negotiating contracts that we don't have merely as a regulator. So in that regard, we do have some, uh, some greater ability to control the development under the context of an annexation agreement than we would simply under our zoning code. But it'd now, be like there is a, a limit in terms of time. Annexation agreements can only go for a total of 20 years. I think we're down to our last eight, eight or 10 years, uh, roughly, for, uh, for the Amberley Woods development as a whole. So is it like a special use permit? It's actually even broader than a special use permit. There okay. are things that, for example, um, our zoning powers are designed to regulate uses. Um, with an annexation agreement, you could go a little bit beyond the mere use. You could actually define uh, more particular aspects of the use of the user that wouldn't be necessarily available under zoning powers. So th there, there are areas that we essentially can extend our powers, but only for the limited time of the annexation agreement, and only if it's mutually agreed, because it is an agreement. Okay, so when, when we get these recommendations back from the boards and commissions to begin formulating our opinions on that, or vote on it, or whatever the case is, uh, they're aware of, they've been made aware of their additional powers or authority or I don't even know. I think they pick. understand that in addition to the typical zoning approvals and other design type of uh, reviews that they go through that they will also have to have an amendment to the annexation agreement. Okay. Um, and, and that has a slightly different process as well which will require a hearing before the council before the council actually votes on that. Okay. Thank you. And I just have a quick question. Uh, with Mariano's and the 
the agreement we have with Bannockburn. As far as sales tax revenue, if it's built, do we share in any of the revenues generated? Staff will bring a recommendation to the City Council on that, and I think I can fairly say that, yes, that will be part of our recommendation. Okay, that was a curiosity. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Yeah. Yes? No, you do. Oh, uh, Vic, I guess I'm confused with this annexation thing and the powers and the whatever. Is this a whole separate thing that's going to come before City Council? I mean, whole, let's assume the Whole Foods thing gets through um, at the BRB and the Plan Commission, and there comes a recommendation here. This is a whole separate thing? My, my expectation is, and Kathy and I have discussed this to some degree, is that it will go through the various stages that any development ordinarily does. When it comes to the council, you will have yet one more layer on top of it, but the expectation is that you would be asked to vote on all of it in succession. So you'd first be hearing and considering the annexation agreement, which would outline all of the other steps, which would then be taken in succession. Okay. A follow up on that. The, the annexation was just the 40 acre parcel or did it include some surrounding parcels? It was for all of the Amberley Woods, I think it was 38 point some acres. Mm -hmm. uh, and it includes the multifamily as well as the uh, the single family to the south of Amberley Court, as well as the northwest uh, quadrant of the property, which is me being reviewed for the uh, for the retail area. So, question: Would those <coughs> landowners now have vested rights in in that annexation agreement, such just like a CCRs in a homeowner subdivision? That the the annexation agreement had a specific term that the provisions relating to any particular parcel could be amended only between the city and the owner of that particular parcel. So there, there's not a, uh, a ball and chain effect between one component of the Amberley development and the rest of it. We're thinking ahead. <laughs> and any further questions? There being none, we're going to move on to the next section, which would be other matters for council to address. Are there any other matters that uh, the members of the council would like to address? None. Opportunity for public comment. And we'll move on to uh, entertain a motion for adjournment at this point. So moved. Do we second. have a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, none. Uh, meeting adjourned. Thanks. <clears throat>